It's been a long time since we've heard it, but the Cleveland Browns are in the playoffs and we're taking on the Jacksonville Jaguars, which again is a really weird thing to be saying out loud, but it's happening, people. If you look at the wild card round, the Chargers beat the Ravens, the Cowboys and the Eagles faced off, and Dallas absolutely destroyed them. The Titans went to Jacksonville, and Jacksonville, as you know, obviously walked out with the W. And the Falcons went to Green Bay, and Green Bay says, uh uh, not today, Junior. Aaron Rodgers put on a beatdown and he destroyed the Falcons. So now that we're in the divisional round, the matchups are as follows. Obviously, Jacksonville is traveling to Cleveland to play us. The Cowboys are traveling down to New Orleans to play the Saints. The Chargers are going to New England to play the Patriots. And the Packers are going to LA to face the Rams. Now, we covered it briefly in the previous video, but I want to give you guys a full look at the stats for all of our players on our team in this season. Now, Tyrod, obviously, over 3,000 pass yards, nearly 25 touchdowns. Threw a lot more interceptions than I wanted, but most of those came early on in the year, and he was pretty solid all around. Now, Baker Mayfield threw for just under a 1,000 in limited appearances, 7 touchdowns, 3 interceptions. Still, 3 interceptions feels way too high for me, especially because one of those was a pick 6 we saw almost recently, We still played pretty well for a rookie in minimal time. Now, Sonny Michelle didn't run for 1,000 yards this season, but you gotta keep in mind, Carlos Hyde took the bulk of the carries the first few weeks until we traded Carlos Hyde, so in my opinion, Sonny Michelle had a really good rookie year. Ton touchdowns to go along with two fumbles, which we'll work on for the next season, but still, he played well. Tyrod Taylor just under 500 yards rushing and five touchdowns, showing he is a dual threat quarterback. Nick Chubb came on late for us, 200 plus yards, five touchdowns for him. He was a monster in the red zone. We'll see a lot of him in the playoffs this year. Baker Mayfield, okay, got one rushing touchdown. And after that, nobody else really did too much. Jarvis Landry was by far the best receiver on our team. 1,300 receiving yards, 80 plus catches, and 14 receiving touchdowns. And he played in all 16 games. I'm happy with how we played this season. And Josh Gordon was good too. Almost 1,000 yards for him. Building on a pretty good legacy. I mean, he's turned his career completely around. Six touchdowns. I want to see him double that next season, but still a viable threat for this squad. And Joku was really good this year. Des Bryant, we probably won't re-sign him going into the offseason. He was kind of a guy we wanted to get in, but we'll replace him with a younger player or a rookie in the next year. Sonny Michelle had 140 on the, on the air with two touchdowns. Seth Devolve caught one touchdown. And Duke Johnson Jr., also called one. Going down here is what we saw Marquez Williams, the fullback, got involved. 42 yards receiving and a touchdown as well. Now, Rod Johnson was a rookie on our team, but I'm kind of salty. He gave up 13 sacks in just 10 games played. We have to make sure that we get another left tackle through the draft, and if they have a higher rating than him, there's a good chance they might start. Defensively, our tackle leader was Christian Kirksey. 93 tackles in the season, two and a half sacks and two interceptions by far and ahead our defensive captain this year. Our sack leader this year was Emmanuel Agba with 12 on the season. A little bit behind him was Miles Garrett, Ojin Joby, who was injured a lot this season. I think he missed about four to five weeks. Still got five sacks on the year. We see uh, Meter with four and a half, Christian Kirksey again with two and a half, Brantley Thomas and Kindred all chipped in as well. And all the way down here, look at even some of our corners that are getting involved here. Here, and EJ Gaines getting half a sack. Interception wise, Navarro Bowman, who was injured a lot this year as well, three on the year for him. EJ Gaines had three, Kirksey with two, TJ Carey with two. Then we had one by Schobert, Demarius Randall, uh, Body Calhoun, and Denzel Ward. From a kicking perspective, Zane Gonzalez didn't really have the year that I thought he would. I mean, 74% of your field goals is not exactly ideal. He did hit a 56 yarder, which is great, but going into year number two for him, I need that accuracy to step up significantly. As a coach, I was setting out to have more than nine wins this season, and we did just that. We had a lot more wins than I thought we would have this year. It was a heck of a season, and we have some experience points to go ahead and spend because of that. Now, I already have expert scouting and master trade negotiator, and over here on the player progression side, we have increased player weekly goal experience. And rather than focus on offense right now, we're going to focus on getting our defensive back training up. That matters to me more than anything right now. Now, we have offensive line as well, and you know what? If you got money to spend, you might as well spend it. We're going to boost both of those guys up. I'm pretty happy with where we are right now. And with the end of the season comes end of the season award. So MVP is going to be Drew Brees. Coach of the year, though, goes to a guy that might look a little familiar to a lot of you guys, and I'm pretty proud of that. In the AFC, is Blake Bortles getting Offensive Player of the Year. In the NFC, it is, of course, Drew Brees because he won the MVP. In the AFC, the Defensive Player of the Year goes to CJ Mosley. And in the NFC, it goes to Darrell Washington. In the AFC, the Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Josh Allen with Sony Michelle taking fifth place. And in the NFC, we see Mitch Trubisky with the 4-11 Bears taking it on that side. And lastly, your Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Raekwon McMillan of the Dolphins. And on the NFC side, you're going to see Gerard Davis take it with the 8-8 Lions. Lots of talent out there, but it's time to jump into the playoffs. So in the playoffs, to recap, you guys know we're playing Jacksonville today. 
play and the LA Chargers and New England Patriots are squaring off and the winner of these two games will meet in the AFC Championship so if we take care of business today it's the Chargers it's the Patriots it's one of those two but let's not get too far ahead of ourselves let's focus on today's game because look Tyrod Taylor if our offensive line protects him He's going to be a monster. He's been killing it all season long, and we're going to show why he should have won the MVP this season despite sitting out week 17. So on this cold day in Cleveland, we are going to kick things off with Tyrod Taylor hanging off to Sony Michelle. Michelle is ready to go, and look at him. Okay, not getting as many yards as I thought, but two is fine to start it off. Jacksonville is a team that for so long was so bad, just like Cleveland, but their defense is unbelievable. I don't know how we're going to go ahead and stop them today, but we're going to see what we can do. Now, Michelle's going to try to make a couple of moves, getting his second touch of the game, and he gets two yards in the air. Now, we're early in the game. It's third down and six here on the 29, deep in our own territory. Tyrod's got to come through and get him a first down here. So we're going to put Des Bryant a little bit higher up on this route. Tyrod's going to take the snap back. He's got, Den he's got uh, looks like Des Bryant across the middle. Des Bryant's going to hold that one in, and he's going to go down to the 49. Second completion of the day for Tyrod. I mean, look, say what you will about Des Bryant. That's a dude that didn't get as many touches as we thought he would get, but he came to Cleveland because he saw a vision, and maybe we will re-sign him. Maybe we won't re-sign him. I want to know what you guys think what we should do with Des in the offseason. And keep in mind, Des was on a one-year deal coming out of free agency this offseason, so we'll see if we want to extend him to, you know, a longer-term thing or do something different. But I think he's got some potential. I just but sitting Cleveland, look at Josh Gordon. This has been a big time player all season long, and he goes down inside the red zone. Cleveland has been lights out in the red zone so far this season, and things are looking great here. On the 19, Tyrod goes to a play action fake. A little bit of a blitz coming. Tyrod's going to roll out. He's got a guy across the middle who's going to try to thread the needle here, and that was going to be poked out by Jalen Ramsey. And when you look at that play again, Tyrod could have for sure ran a little bit there, but he is under strict orders not to take too many hits today. The coaches want to make sure that he's healthy because we're trying to make a playoff run, not an early playoff exit. So it's third down and nine here for Cleveland. Tyrod's back at shotgun again. He's going to roll to the right. Tyrod's got some room in front. They say, look, Tyrod, don't run it. He's going to decide to run it, too. He gets hit down inside the five, and Tyrod gets the first down for Cleveland. Tyrod completely disobeyed coach's orders there, but coaches are like, okay, he didn't get hurt. He didn't fumble, and we got the first down. So why are we mad again? And Nick Chubb says, don't mind me. Going into the end zone, running over the safety. But there's a flag on the play, and Nick Chubb doesn't know it yet. Oh, this is going to be unfortunate. It looks like it's going to be a holding penalty. And just like that, this one is coming back. So Nick Chubb came in the game, got super hyped, made a nice little touchdown, and then it had to come back. So things are unfortunate. Now we're going to see Tyrod throw one and oh! Junior Gillette's going to intercept that one. He's going to move through. He gets lit up. He fumbles. It's picked up by Deshaun Gibson, who got ran over on the previous play. And Jacksonville has the ball. That is the absolute definition of highs and lows for the Cleveland Brown team. Look, they go in, they get a touchdown. There's a holding penalty that gets called back. And they throw an interception on what should have been a big touchdown, a big moment for him in the playoffs. That's just unfortunate. Now, the big thing here for Cleveland and Coach Vini is to make sure this team just settles in, locks in, makes some nice little plays here, and just doesn't let Jacksonville score. Now, we got to watch out for Leonard Fournette. They're going to hand it off here, run, and we're going to stop him right at the line of scrimmage, but he does get about a yard or so. Now, Leonard Fournette moves to the right-hand side of Blake Bortles here. You know, Bortles looking for something. Maybe a play-action play, possibly. Oh, they're going to fake the run. The blitz is there. TJ Carey misses up on his route, and Cole is going to hold that one in. A huge, bad play by Cleveland, and Jacksonville capitalizes. A huge miracle layer there by TJ Carey and just like this the Browns are not looking too mentally tough in the moment so Blake Bortles goes under center Leonard Fournette in the backfield looking for something they're going to obviously run this one Miles Garrett says uh-uh not so fast young fella drops him for a loss of three second down and 13 after a huge play by Miles Garrett we'll see a blitz there in Kirksey and Fournette is going to get right in the backfield dropping him for a loss again on that play a major major third down and 16 look we have the interception which they then fumbled and still picked up so we are here Trying to make sure that if they get anything, it's going to be a field goal. Schober's going to drive back. Oh, a nice little halfback draw. This is actually working pretty well, and they're going to settle for a field goal here. A gain of 10 yards, fourth and six now. Now, last time we saw a field goal, Denzel Ward ended up blocking it. Can he do the same thing here against Jacksonville in the playoffs? They're going to hike this one any moment now. Denzel Ward's going to try to get in. He's a little bit late. That field goal is directly down the center, and Jacksonville has an early 3-0 lead. And the last time we saw Ty right out here, he was magnificent until that penalty got the play called back, and then he threw an interception. So, despite that, he was money. Now Tyrod comes back out. He's anxious to get out here again. And look at David and Joku just wrecking people out there, destroying a young fella. And he picks up the first. Sony Michelle back in the game, ready to get some action going. He hasn't had the most successful game so far, and his woes continue after four rushes and six yards. First quarter is coming to a close now. Only a few seconds left. Tyrod opts to go ahead and hike the ball here. 
Got it across the middle. The penalty is right there. Oh, they're going to get him. Tyrod has been sacked. We're going to try to get to the guy, but Jackson is going to go all the way into the end zone. No one is going to touch him, and the end of the first quarter ends in dramatic fashion as Jacksonville gets the scoop and score into the end zone. Things have very quickly gone from bad to worse. Tyrod Taylor now has two turnovers that have just cost his team points on both times. Now, Sonny Michelle tries to run again, and oh boy, he gets killed again. So far this game, Tyrod went from magnificent to looking shook, and Sonny Michelle just can't seem to find anything possibly to work for. Now, we're going to try to throw in a little bit of a hook here, and that corner route's not going to work either. So here we are, third down 11. They got a lot of dudes in the box, and Tyrod just needs to make something happen. He's got a guy across the middle, and Josh Gordon, he threads the needle. And Josh Gordon drops it. Now Jacksonville goes down. They score another field goal. And they've got a two-score lead now. Is it 13 to nothing in this ballgame? So look, something, anything. This offense has got to get things going ASAP. So here's Tyrod again looking for something. He's going to try to run. The pocket broke down pretty significantly. Tyrod's going to slide because, again, we cannot afford him to turn it over or get injured. And we did get news that our right tackle is actually injured and looks to be out for the entire game, which is going to be scary. But we do get a first down there thanks to Sony Michelle having some pretty good hands. A new set of downs for the Browns as Tyrod's back in shotgun yet again. He's been money there. He's going to float one up here a little bit. This one is going to be caught and then dropped, nearly picked off by A.J. Bouye. If you're a fan of the Browns, you have to be disappointed. Your team was dominant all season long, especially at the end, and this is the product they put out here for you in the playoffs? Like, this is probably not what you were expecting. So Tyrod again, back in shotgun. He's at his tight end, strolling across, and Seth DeVolve. Seth DeVolve is going to catch that one, and he gets a first down now, down at the 47. Things are getting tense now. Coach Vini knows that they don't get a touchdown here. Things get ugly, especially if Jacksonville happens to score before the end of this half again. So time right again, wait for something to happen. He's got Des Bryant underneath, but he gets sacked by not one, but two players. A half sack there from Malik Jackson after he already has a scoop and score. The offensive line has not been there so far for Tyron Taylor today. I feel like they just betrayed him, if anything. So Tyron loads one up, says, let me go deep real quick. Jarvis Landry, he catches it. Jarvis Landry is into the end zone. A miraculous catch, a big finish, and 53 yards later, the young fella is in the end zone again. Tyron tossed one up in double coverage, and he still came down with it. One more look at this. Tyron just heaves it up, gets destroyed on that play. Hit so hard, and Jarvis Landry said, oh, don't mind me. I got you, coach, teammates, whoever. Look at this one more time. On Jalen Ramsey, mind you, holds that one in. Now, we've hit the two-minute warning. It's about a minute 47 on the clock, and we're only down six, but Jacksonville's out here driving. So Bortles is across the middle to D.D. Westbrook, and Westbrook hauls it in for about five or so. Second and two again. Bortles back there looking for something. He's in shotgun, and he's dangerous right now. It's on the 33-yard line. We're trying to be mindful of it. This one's going deep over to the edge, and what a catch by Marquise Lee. Lays out, gets both feet down. That's a big one. Things are scary for the Browns. We have just been struggling to stop this team from getting into the red zone, but once they get there, we've been mostly successful. We've held them to two field goals and a touchdown. So Bortles was out to the flats. We're going to see a big tackle there on TJ Yeldon, stopping him for about one. Second and ten again. Bortles makes a change to the line of scrimmage. TJ Yeldon in the game. Looks like Leonard Fournette is actually hurt. We don't know the extent of his injury, but Fournette is definitely hurt. Now across middle going to go to Cole. Keelan Cole's going to hold that one in. They drop him about two yards shy of the line of where he needed to be at the first down marker. It's third down. Blake Bortles moves to under the center now. Likely is going to be a run. We've seen him go to the spot before. It's been a run. End of passing. And the blitz is there in a huge sack this time. Coming off the edge. Christian Kirk to get his first sack of the game. And we went ahead and used our timeout. They're likely going to get a field goal here. But we still have time on the clock to go down the field and maybe get a field goal of our own or a touchdown. So the kicker is going to line up here for Jacksonville. Denzel Ward comes off the edge. Nowhere close. And that one is good like the previous few. And it's a nine-point lead for Jacksonville. So another one's kicked deep here. We're going to see what Duke Johnson Jr. can do for the return game. Duke's going to go through. Oh, Duke's got some moves, and Duke gets dropped a little bit there. This offense really hasn't found a groove. I mean, the one play that's worked for us has been a Hail Mary to Jarvis Landry, and we're happy about that, but that can't be all of our offense at this point. So again, we got a guy across middle, so it's deep. David Njoku's going to haul that one in. He's going to get dropped in midfield at the 46. A big catch, and what a great route by David Njoku. And you got to give Tyrod Taylor some props because that was a heck of a throw. Now, the blitz is coming. Tyrod under pressure throws one and is batted away. Tyrod back in shotgun again. So see what he can get going here. A little bit of pressure coming. Tyrod's going to roll out to the right-hand side. Nothing is there, so he decides to get rid of it smartly. It's third down to 10, and we have to at least get in field goal range because if we don't, well, uh, it might make it a little tough to get some points. And it goes off our receiver's shoulder, making it fourth down and 10. So rather than go ahead and punt this one away, coaches, you know what? It's fourth and 10, 20 seconds left, I believe, in our defense. We're going to opt to go ahead and leave this one out there. See what we can do. Fourth down. A guy across the middle. We're going to get him there. Josh Gordon holds on to it, and they're going to get him. We're going to go ahead and spike the ball really quickly. If we can get everyone to the line of scrimmage instead, you know what? We're going to go ahead and call a timeout when the ball gets a little bit closer. Everyone lines up here. 
With about three seconds left, we'll take the timeout. We did, that's our last one of the half, and now it's field goal time. So Zane Gonzalez is going to line up here, a big field goal to help cut this lead into just being a touchdown away. So it's going to be close, accuracy was not on point, it hasn't been his best part of the season, but he drills that one. So now it's 10 to 16, we're only down 6 going into halftime. Not a bad turnaround for the Browns. Now Leonard Fournette got knocked out of most of the first half, but look who's back in the backfield. Mr. Fernandez, and that's not good news for us because he is by far their best player. Oh, and what a pass, nearly intercepted there, almost so close. We've been trying to mix things up a little bit and getting some blitz off the edge, and Miles Garrett has been pretty much held in check at this point, but if we can get Miles Garrett some pressure off that edge, we're gonna have Blake Bortles with a lot of problems. I hand it off to Fernandez, and this time he goes to the opposite side, but guess what, Agba stuffs him there at the line of scrimmage. So it's third down and 12, Bortles back in the shotgun. Leonard Fournette still there with no TJ Yeldon this time. Little fake, little play action. Bortles again rolling around, gonna throw it on the dot here. This is close, nearly intercepted, but Keelan Cole grabs that one, and they're inside the red zone again. You gotta give Blake Bortles props. That was a heck of a throw, that was a tight window, and we laid a heck of a hit on Keelan Cole, but unfortunately, it didn't really mean anything for us. So we're gonna send a blitz here. Fournette's gonna find some room there. We end up missing the tackle, but we do get him in the back a little bit. He's only averaging two yards per carry right now. Bortles again, trying to get that passing game going. He's been throwing some dots pretty more far. Zafarian Jacobs is gonna hand that one. Oh, the fake! Bortles keeps the bootleg, and Bortles is gonna drag us in for the first down. Nine yard pickup for the big fella. You have to imagine here, if we don't stop Jacksonville here, things are gonna get really, really tough for our squad overall. So we're gonna get there and Leonard Fournette, and we stop him, but he still gets a yard. We're gonna line up and hope that our team can just stop Blake Bortles in this Jacksonville offense. So they're going to hand it off. To, oh, the fake. We got a blitz there, and Jamie Collins Jr. is going to get him a big sack now. Thank you, Jamie Collins. You made a big stop. So it's third down and goal. Blake Bortles has no one in the backfield. It's just him. Mono y mono. Bortles goes across the middle. That one is intercepted. A huge interception there by Joe Schobert. First one of the day for the Cleveland Browns on defense. And what a snag by the big fella. One more look here. Bortles across the middle. Schobert gets it simultaneously with Marquise Lee. Takes it away from him at the last minute again. Look at the break on the route. Says, uh uh, no, sir. This one's mine, big fella. And the Browns have made a big adjustment. And that's putting Nick Chubb in the game as a starting running back. Michelle will still get a few touches here and there. But Nick Chubb, he just had a better opportunity so far this game. And he almost has more rushing yards than just that. That carry that Michelle has all game. This is the most important drive of the game for the Cleveland Browns. You get a touchdown here, you're taking the lead on this squad. Now Jacksonville's gonna hit Nick Chubb in the backfield and unfortunately they're gonna drop him for a loss of a yard. A big third down here, Tyrod knows his team needs it. We'll see David and Joku across the middle, we throw it to him and Joku is ready to go again. Another big grab by the big tight end and look at Coach Vini on the field. Yo, Coach Vini, get back, don't get a flag right now. But the Browns getting that first down to David and Joku, they have time now that they can actually run the ball a little bit. We do not wanna get in what we call chuck it mode where you have to throw the ball nonstop the entire game. You wanna make sure your running backs go out there and get a little bit of room to breathe. And we're seeing just that there with Nick Chubb. Now Des Bryant did get injured on a recent play, so we're seeing Josh Gordon step in for him and fill his role. No idea if that's gonna be long term or short term, but hopefully we see Des Bryant back sooner than later because the more weapons we have on the team, Nick Chubb, not just one player, he runs over two players. I mean, maybe Nick Chubb is the only weapon we need. He might have a concussion there, but that was unreal. So Des Bryant has a pectoral strain. We're gonna opt to keep him in the game. We'll see if that pays off for us. So we're heading into the fourth quarter. We are down six points. This is the most important game of the season. Can we win it? Second down and two, and Nick Chubb is in the backfield, ready to try to run over more defenders on Jacksonville's team. Chubb's gonna take the handoff. Plenty of room to run here. Nick Chubb's out here running wild. Look at Nick Chubb. He's got one guy to beat. Can he get past him? He's gonna try to stiff arm. They're gonna wrestle him down at the 10-yard line, and Nick Chubb scampers down all the way inside the red zone. Best decision. Look, say what you will. Sony Michelle has his role in this team, but Nick Chubb, Nick Chubb just might be that back. I mean, the way he's playing, he might be starting next week, too. So here in the red zone, after Nick Chubb's major run, he's going to run to the left-hand side here. Not as many yards, but still picks up four. Second down and six on the six-yard line. Tyrod Taylor's back again. He's feeling some pressure. Tyrod's going to try to break out of a tackle. He does. Tyrod's rolling around. Tyrod's going to keep it in. Tyrod Taylor breaks the tackle, stays upright, and gets into the end zone. And just like that, the Cleveland Browns have a lead in the playoffs. I repeat, the Cleveland Browns are about to have a lead in the playoffs. Now, Jacksonville has a major turnover where they end up seeing Blake Bortles fumbling the football, and Joe Schobert, who already has the interception today, picks it up and recovers it for the Browns. And Nick Chubb says, oh, don't mind me. I'm ready to go and work again, and he destroys another safety. You are not safe out there when Nick Chubb is running at you. 
I mean, there have been a lot of factors that have benefited the Browns today, but I honestly think the biggest one has been Nick Chubb just running wild so far in this game. Nick Chubb's out to the edge here again, running over another guy, but Miles Jackson says, oh, you're not going to run me over completely. Even though we have the lead, we want to obviously run it, but we want to stay in attack mode right now and put some pressure on this squad. So Tyrod Taylor's going to whip one out here to Jarvis Landry. Landry's running, and Jalen Ramsey cannot get him. Jarvis Landry into the end zone again for his second receiving touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cleveland Browns have extended their lead yet again. Time is not on the side right now of the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're down eight points. We have a nice, comfortable lead, and there's only about 319 left for him at the moment. So they're going to go underneath to Safarian Jacobs. We're going to try to get in on a gang tackle, and we do drop him. The crazy thing is for our team is that Blake Bortles doesn't have a single passing touchdown. We have stopped this man as many times as we can in the red zone. It's getting really tough, though. So Bortles again out here. The move with Emmanuel Agba getting another sack. 12 in the regular season. Add another one to his playoff total. But you have to give our team props. We've given up a significant amount of yards, but Blake Bortles does not have a passing touchdown against us. And that's considerable considering he was an MVP candidate. So Bortles out here rolling. He's going to throw one on the run. We're going to try to line him up, and Marquise Lee's going to hold on to that one. Marquise Lee is going to break the tackle. We miss all over the place. Marquise Lee makes us look crazy. And the Jacksonville Jaguars have scored an unbelievable touchdown to silence the Cleveland Stadium. So here we are, a two-point lead, two minutes left on the two-yard line. What does that mean? Well, there's a lot of twos going on right now, but we have to get a stop here. So Bortles is looking for something. He's going to throw it out to the flash to Leonard Fournette. And Fournette is into the end zone. A tie ball game with two minutes on the clock. Jacksonville's going to line up to kick one off deep again. We have two minutes left in our home stadium. This is why you come to the playoffs. You need your players to show up big here in these big time moments. The two minute warning has hit. We're on the 26 yard line. We have plenty of time left in this game because we have all of our time out for the moment. So the front slate we go to is going to be a halfback screen. We'll see Nick Chubb get it. And thankfully he drops it because that would have been a loss of yards. Second down and 10. Jacksonville knows that they have the momentum right now. We have to get some big plays underneath our belts or things could get really spicy really quick. So second and 10, Tyron's going to drop back. We're going to see him roll out to the right-hand side a little bit. He's got a guy moving. He throws it behind him. He had Njoku wide open, and it's an incomplete pass to bring up third down. This is the biggest play of the game. We said that a couple of times today, but we need to convert here. And oh, look at this. Jarvis Landry kind of got his guy, Jalen Ramsey, beat by a step. And no, they're going to go pass interference. I believe so. Jarvis is livid. Coach Vini is livid. Jalen Ramsey's livid. Who's going to be right? Who's going to be wrong? But they called it on the defense. A monumental play. We are absolutely going to accept that. 31 yards of difference there. The home crowd cannot believe it. They had got a break. They finally got a break here. And Jalen Ramsey, he's going to have something to say about that in the postgame press conference. Either way, if they win or lose, he's going to be talking about it. But they're gonna talk, also going to talk about Nick Chubb destroying safeties this game. Either way, if we get a first down or not here, we are trying to troop as much of this clock as humanly possible because we do not want to suffer a bad fate here. And oh, Nick Chubb! Nick Chubb sprints through, and Jacksonville will use their first time out because guess what? We are now in field goal range. Still a tight ball game inside field goal range now. Tyrod Taylor moves under center. Nick Chubb is in the backfield. Everybody in the stadium knows what's going to happen, except for apparently the Jacksonville Jaguars. Nick Chubb says, oh, don't mind me, the juke move. Nick Chubb has been a power back, but he's showing off the jukes there. Cleveland has Jacksonville right where they want him. Look, their running back has been killing them. They're inside the red zone now. A touchdown would be ideal, but we'll take a field goal for sure. On the 11-yard line again, Nick Chubb is here. Jacksonville could try to let us score here, but they have no timeout, so you never know what's going to happen. And Nick Chubb says, don't mind me, another first down. On the three-yard line, it is offensive line versus defensive line. All Nick Chubb has to do is basically run, but we need our offensive line to give the defensive line a pretty good push. And Nick Chubb is going to get stood up. He's going to fall in, and they say he's into the end zone. Nick Chubb scores a touchdown there. Coach Vini is hyped. There's a lot of time left on the board, but Jacksonville doesn't have a single timeout. After Jacksonville just opted to go ahead and, you know, spike the football, it's third down and five so their chances to score are getting very limited with 40 some seconds left christian kirks is going to move back this throw is going to be picked off kindred's got this one kindred is off to the races blake Bortles is there to go to get him but this is going to be too little too late kindred is the savior and the browns are going to walk out of here with the w what an unbelievable game for the cleveland browns look things were looking grim early i mean they were down multiple points they battled back tyrod taylor out here breaking tackles the defense stepped up major getting interceptions getting fumbles getting a peek at the end of the game to walk it out there with the pick six what an unbelievable game for the Cleveland Browns. I'm still in shock. To recap the stats, Blake Bortles went 19 of 26, had one touchdown, almost 300 yards, but he threw for three interceptions. And Tyrod Taylor said 13 of 23, 200 and about 50 yards, two touchdowns, one pick, but still he played one heck of a game today. On the ground, I think we're going to see Nick Chubb start at least for the next game because he killed it when he came in today. 14 attempts, 140 yards on the ground, and one touchdown. Lots of broken tackles for him. Leonard Fournette. 
didn't really have the best game and Sony Michelle five attempts for five yards not exactly ideal but again shout out to Tyrod Taylor did have the fumble that was you know kind of inexcusable but he did have a major touchdown which helped bring this team back into the game in the air Austin Safarian Jenkins got a lot of garbage time yards but still he was huge for Jacksonville Keelan Cole had some of the biggest grabs for this team today but David Njoku on third down we needed him the most stepped up huge Jarvis Landry three catches two of those were a touchdown and Marquis Lee can't forget had an unbelievable touchdown to tie it up at 24 earlier in the game Defensively, a couple of people we got to give shout outs to today. Christian Kirksey, seven tackles and one sack. Joe Chobert had seven tackles, an interception, and a fumble recovery. And then Derek Kindred, the safety, the young fella nobody really believes in. Five total tackles and the interception that went for a pick six to seal this one. And then Emmanuel Agba, so many big hits on the quarterback today, including one sack. Big shout out to all those guys. Again, the Cleveland Browns are going to move on to the AFC Championship. Will it be the Chargers? Will it be the Patriots? Leave me a comment down below and tell me who you think it's going to be. I can't wait for the next episode.